Hello and welcome. This guide is meant specifically for the Cooler by the Lake podcast team, but I figured it could be useful for anyone, so I've made it public. I hope you find it helpful. In my experience, editing isn't an exact science. It's an art, something you have to learn by doing, fiddling, and figuring it out as you go. So, in this guide, I'll be giving a general overview of what you should be aiming for and keeping in mind while you edit in order to achieve the best sound. The specifics will vary heavily on what hard and software you're working with, what kind of content you're making, what genre it is, and of course, your individual styles and tastes will also influence things. CBTL covers everything from academic essays, fiction and non-fiction short stories, poems, and even interviews. And, at least when I'm hosting, I do my intros, intermissions, and outros in a sort of mock radio show style. So, your editing is going to have to accommodate for all those various different elements. But don't let everything I just mentioned intimidate you, because for the most part, it's all instinctive. You'll be able to recognize what does and doesn't sound right just by listening, and as you'll go, you will find those instincts. And in this video, I'll be using an actual audiobook I've been working on as an example as well. When I started it, I had no experience whatsoever narrating or editing, and now I've surpassed 12 hours of published content. So I think that goes to show how, if you're serious about learning to narrate or edit, it really isn't that hard. The main problem in making this guide is that there's a wide variety of software that people might be using, and half the battle comes down to knowing how to use your software. I use Adobe Premiere, which is actually a video editing software. It works for what I need it for, and that's all that really matters. Other than your software, the only thing you're going to need is a good pair of headphones or earbuds. The more detail you can hear in your audio, the better you'll be able to polish it. And while it's optional, you might want to have a mouse. It's also worthwhile to learn the keyboard shortcuts for your cutting and selection tool. The vast majority of editing comes down to making precise cuts, trimming, and moving around sections of audio. So being able to quickly switch between those two tools will save a lot of time. And having a mouse will spare your fingers and wrists a lot of repetitive motion, and it'll make making precise edits a lot easier. The most important task is to make the audio sound natural and make it flow smoothly. You want a near constant flow of speaking. What we're going for is to create the sense of someone's internal monologue. If you've never heard the term before or don't know what it means, an internal monologue is when you hear your own voice in your head speaking your thoughts, or in a more fitting example for us, narrating whatever you're reading. For me, it's an almost entirely unbroken train of speaking, and that's the effect you should be going for with your editing. You stay here, then. I'll find whoever's going to be the next you want and kill them. I just need a little more time, Pete 21 said desperately. You stay here, then. I'll find whoever's going to be the next you want and kill them. I just need a little more time, Pete 21 said desperately. Cut pauses to improve flow, and cut out whatever breaths you can. Leave any breaths or pauses that improve the story, particularly when a character is speaking or narrating their own thoughts. It is worth noting that in professional audiobooks, many narrators speak slowly and there are longer pauses between the sentences. That slower pace seems to be the industry standard, and until I started and began comparing my style to others, I was never conscious of how long narrators pause between speaking. So it isn't the end of the world if you leave longer pauses in, so you don't have to trim out every little gap. In fact, if you do, it'll probably sound unnatural and weird. I'd say pauses should not go over one to one and a half seconds long. What sounds right will depend on the story and the narration, and that's your end goal, to enhance the narrator's delivery. Many narrators will do multiple takes of the same line if they aren't satisfied with their delivery, which will lead you to possibly having to sit through five minutes of someone saying the same thing over and over. When there are multiple deliveries of the same line, you need to determine which delivery is best. I think I hear them. 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 I think I hear them! And sometimes it might be possible to splice things together to get the best sounding sentence, so you should try and do that whenever you can. Never give up, no matter what you have to do. You keep trying, and you never give up, no matter what you have to do. And, of course, cut as many general errors and gaps as possible. Things like the aforementioned breaths, and other things like table bumps, background noise, audio glitches, and so on. I've got a Mac teaching me how to access the Overmass terminals. Desperately. I've got a Mac teaching me how to access the Overmass terminals. But if removing them disrupts the flow in an even more obnoxious way, like cutting off a word, it's best to leave them in. The goal is immersion, and obvious editing or editing errors is far more immersion-breaking than quirks in the narration. The longer the story, the more tolerable occasional minor errors are. In mathy terms, the ratio of good to bad is proportional to the length of the story. Use effects like remove noise, which by noise they mean white noise, to improve sound quality. But don't overuse them because it will make the audio sound unnatural. The audio I've been using has had effects on it, but this audio doesn't have any. And now I've taken the same effects I've been using and turned them way up. I'm sure the difference is pretty clear. 
It's easier to overlook poor quality because of technical limitations than poor quality because an editor messed something up. If someone is invested, they won't care about a little jank that can't be helped. I suggest you take a clip that best represents the whole and then mess around with your effects until you're satisfied. Then save them as a preset and apply that preset to the entire file before you start editing. Then, as you go along, adjust as need be with each clip. Depending on the mic and the conditions the recording were made under, your presets will need adjusting. For something like Project Horizons, where the mic and booth stay the same, I can reuse my preset for each recording. But for something like the Borby Special, which used multiple mics and was recorded in various locations, each recording required fine-tuning. Again, let me reiterate, when it comes to effects, less is more. And the better quality the raw audio is, the less you should do to it. One important thing to pay attention to is the volume. If you're putting audio from two different sources together, like an introduction and an interview or a narration, you'll want to ensure they're the same, but it's almost a guarantee that they won't be. It's also important to note that a narrator's voice will change volume as they read. It's not much of an issue with things where the reader stays in their voice, things like essays, poems, or personal narratives, but once characters and dialogue get involved, that's where you need to pay closer attention. Sometimes it's also a trick of the mic or recording. To summarize, the end goal is to create clean, immersive audio that listeners can get lost in. The narration needs to be as natural and as genuine as possible, but there's only so much that can be done in the booth to achieve that, no matter how skilled the narrator is. So it's your job as the editor to take those parts the narrator made and assemble them into the final product, and to make that final product as nice sounding as possible.